everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here today i'm going to be talking about everything bottles and showing you the process basically from washing the bottles all the way to actually making the bottle with the formula showing you how i sterilize them and everything i thought that this would be really helpful to new moms or even a mom who is just recently taking on bottle feeding because it is definitely a process especially if you're doing it at the newborn stage, but really this video will help you at any stage that you start to bottle feed. But before we get into today's video, again, I just wanna say thank you so much for being here, staying connected and supporting my channel. If you are new here, I am a mom of two. I have a three month old baby boy named Eli, and I have a two year old girl named Ava, and a little fur baby named Riley. And if I'm talking a little bit soft in this video it's because everybody's asleep and I'm trying to do a video um, whenever I can that's mom life and I want to be as transparent with you as possible in all of my videos but that is why I might be talking a little bit low um, and also don't forget to hit that red subscribe button below hit that bell notification so you can get notified every time that I do post a video and of course I am a motherhood and lifestyle channel so everything for the most part has to do with motherhood so in today's video i'm going to be walking you through the whole process and we're going to start off with washing the bottles so we have our dirty bottles i usually make enough for the entire day so at the end of the day i have a ton of bottles to wash well at least five or six um, that's how i do it especially if they're going to their grandparents house or something eli has all of his bottles for the day so i use a bottle brush and i usually use some antibacterial um dawn soap the lip the clear lemon scent is my favorite and i just make sure i scrub them good with get them all soapy with the bottle brush make sure i'm cleaning the nipples with the little attachment that comes with it and i just make sure that i put it through the nipple making sure that i also put water through the hole because a lot of the times the milk gets you know stuck in there and most of the time i do try to rinse the bottles out throughout the day as i go but if for whatever reason there's been milk sitting in those bottles it's really important to do that so i just make sure they get i get them all soapy i rinse them put them on the other side of the sink to dry a little bit and then i transfer them over here to my um little grass drying rack the little grass drying rack they sit here sometimes i i go ahead and transfer them over to the sterilizer but sometimes I just leave them here to dry a little bit um, just make sure that you know it really depends um, if they're if I leave them here to dry th then I'll just go ahead and put them in the sterilizer to um, in the dry in the um, sanitize option this sterilizer which I have mentioned in a ton of my other videos is the coral UV sanitizer so if they're already dry, they've been sitting here for a little while, I just put them in here on the sanitize option, which you can sanitize in a little, as little as 10 minutes. If they are wet, then I'll go ahead and put them in the sanitizer to do the entire um, cycle, which is uh, sit, wash, making sure that they're clean, sanitizing them, and then drying them. So in a minute here, I will show you exactly how the sanitizer works. So basically we've already done that first step. We've washed them, let them dry, or they're wet and we're putting them in the sanitizer. So let me show you how the sanitizer works and I'll bring the camera a little bit closer for you. So here's the cor coral UV sanitizer. I already have some bottles in here that were in here overnight. It does have a um, storage option right here, but basically, um, we're going to put these bottles which are already dry and haven't been sanitized in here and we're just going to do the sanitize option we don't need to do the dry option now if they were wet then i would put them in here and do the auto see you can do different um, time slots if you want to if you're just sanitizing you can do it in as little as 10 uh, minutes so this is perfect so we're not gonna do that because these have already been sanitized in here overnight and I use the storage option. But I want to go ahead and put these in here. If you're looking for a really good sterilizer, this one's about 90 to $150. I forget how much, how much exactly they go for, but I know that I got this one on sale 
uh, I think it was Black Friday. I paid like 90 bucks for it with free shipping, but I absolutely love it because you can sanitize toys, nipples. I have Eli's pacifier in here that I, I'm going to be sanitizing in here. So basically, this is the... Um, second step after that I wash them. I do hand wash them, especially at the newborn stage. Now, once Eli is um, a little bit older, you know, maybe like six months, I'll probably just go ahead and um, not just, you know, I don't need to sanitize them every single time. I do sanitize them every time I wash them at this point because he is a newborn. And just to make sure that I have all of the, you know, any type of bacteria or anything like that, I do that. But probably when he's six months, I will probably just, you know, hand wash them and use them and maybe like every other time or every couple of times sanitize them. It really just depends on your preference. If you are, you know, a big germaphobe, you can go ahead and sanitize them to your heart's desire. But this machine is definitely a must have. You can also use it for baby toys and um, even electronics if you just use the sanitize option. This is the option, the auto option is the one that you're is going to basically make sure that they're clean sanitize them and dry them and then you, of course you have all these other options which I love having all of those options because you don't always want to go through the full cycle so we're gonna go ahead and put all of these bottles in here and then I'm going to show you how we're gonna make a bottle So as you see here, I have all the bottles in here and you want to make sure that they're all facing upward so that the opening of the bottle is facing up and that all the nipples are also facing the opening side out. And you just kind of want to make sure, I mean, I, you know, extra pieces like this, I kind of just make, put them in here and make sure that they're um, facing upward. You know, you could probably put it in here a little bit more organized or whatever, but it really doesn't matter as long as you're not overfilling it. You wanna just make sure that you have enough to fill the bottom part. You don't wanna be like stacking too much on. And then basically you just close it. These I just wanna sanitize. So I'm just gonna do the 10 minute sanit. I usually just do a 10 minute sanitizing. These are already dry, so I don't need to dry those. So it just lights up here and that's how you know that it's working. And if you were drying them, then you would hear like a drying sound. But basically how it sanitizes it is it works with a light. I believe it's just like an, uh, an LED light. I think there's a specific name for it, but I'm sorry, I'm not good with remembering that type of stuff. But basically that is what sanitize it. sanitizes it is the light intensity sanitizes it and if you want to learn more information about this i'll leave the link in the description box box below and it will tell you all about how it sanitizes it but i prefer this so much better than a you know one that you put in the microwave that you have to fill with water and all of that stuff you literally do not have any water or anything this is just super quick and as you see the time is going down so i think that's super cool that you can sanitize in as little as 10 minutes so while that is sanitizing, I'm gonna show you how to make a bottle of formula. So our favorite favorite bottles are the Tommy Tippy bottles. We also have the Avent ones, but as you can see, I do have a variety of bottles. This is my little uh, bottle sash right here. And this is about as, I had it way organized when Eli was born and it's kind of gotten disheveled. But uh, this is my bottle uh, cabinet, and I have Medela, I have Munchkin, I have Dr. Brown's, I have some Parent Choice. I have a variety of bottles here. I just like to have a really good option, and you do want to make sure that you're um, trying a bunch of different bottles for your baby. My babies, both of them, have actually loved the Tommy Tippy bottles. They love the wide uh, range nipples. And you also want to make sure that you're using the size that is correct for your baby's age so right now eli uses the one that has a o on it for newborn or he uses one because he is three months old so he can use both of those but as he gets older 
I will change them to the, the next size up and you'll know by the number on the nipple and most brands that's usually how it is so Avent has like they don't have one that's like a newborn there that has an O um, or zero I guess it's a zero but um there starts at one so that's what I'm using for him so we're gonna make him a couple of bottles right now um, since he's three months old he has about four to five ounces it just really depends on how hungry he is and then at night he usually has about six ounces at night and in the morning but during the day he can have usually a four to five ounce bottle so we're gonna make this right now and i'll show you the formula that i am using currently but normally i switch between this one and another brand which i will mention so the formula that i am using is the similac Pro Advance it is their closest formula to breast milk and this is what Ava used as well and what you know didn't hurt her tummy we did try a few other ones Infamil, Gerber Baby I believe but all of those kind of like messed with my kids stomachs I just um, tried one with Eli and he just it, I could just tell you know they he wasn't pooping as often and he was just uncomfortable so you want to try to you know um, experiment with some different formulas with your baby especially if you're a new time mom um, just to make sure that your baby likes it if you don't want to stick to one type of formula and um, not give yourself options it's good to chew to try a couple different ones just to make sure that your baby likes it and that it's not hurting their stomach I also like um, Earth's Best if you are looking for an organic formula then um, Earth's Best is a really great option uh, for formula but this is the one that I chose to go with it's a little bit um, less expensive I usually buy this on Amazon and it costs about th around 35 to 37 dollars for this size so this is definitely a good one to start out with Infamil is really good um, and I believe Similac also has an organic one I with my first baby I used organic for a while but it's just a lot more expensive and honestly I mean, in my opinion, I'm not big on, you know, having to have everything organic and I really don't think it matters that much. But if you're looking for one, I will link Earth's Best uh, below in my Amazon store so you can check it out if you're trying to find a formula for your baby. I just think that for me personally, the ones that say that they're closest to breast milk is the one that I go with. Now, some babies may need something that um, is sensitivity or whatnot it just really depends on your baby's needs they have tons of formula that you can find for your baby and that your baby will love tons of stuff to choose from and i'm talking to you as you know a um mom of two who has gone through a lot of trial and error so if you're a new mom and you're struggling with this area and you're trying to learn more information about bottle feeding and formula I've given you a couple of different options to choose from, but like I said, don't, you know, not give yourself tons of options. Try tons of formulas. There are some babies that are more sensitive than others, so it may take you a little bit longer to find the formula that you want. So without further ado, let's get into making a bottle. So first I start off with pouring the water into the bottles and I just use nursery water you can get this at Walmart Publix or really any grocery store the reason why I used uh, nursery water it's purified water minerals added for taste and it also has added fluoride and it, you do want to keep this refrigerated because it has that um, added stuff now you can just use normal distilled water or normal purified water and you don't have to keep it refrigerated it just really depends on your preferences. I know some people use bottled water, but I really recommend for those early stages, especially the first like three to four months to make sure you're using nursery water, just, you know, because their tummies are so sensitive and you wanna make sure that there's not any like organisms and bacteria or whatever that is normally in our water. And you definitely do not wanna use sink water or anything like that because just to be safe, not all areas, have good drinking water from the sink good tap water that would be good for your babies so just to be safe try to use a nursery water that's just what i would recommend so i'm going to be using um making four ounce bottles so you just want to pour it in and make sure that it is all the way up at the right line and i kind of just 
put it on the, the counter and see if it is actually measuring where I want it to because sometimes I do put more. So I did in this circumstance. So now it is exactly four ounces of water. And Eli is about to wake up, so this is perfect timing. So both are four ounces. And if you follow the instructions on the Similac um, can, which I will do a more closer up of this, that's what it says to do. You wanna make sure that you wash your hands, make sure that you know everything is good. I wash my hands. I also use a hand sanitizer just to make sure I don't have anything on my hands when I'm making his bottles. And then it says add one unpacked level scoop to two to each two ounce of water. So basically one scoop is good for two ounces. So for these bottles, I will be using two scoops. And you want to pour the water in first. I know some people pour the powder in, but you're not going to get an accurate measurement if you do that. I know some people do, and you know you can do whatever works good for you. I am not judging anyone. This is just how I personally recommend to do it and how most experts recommend to do it. And then of course, we're going to complete the rest of the process. So basically, I'll show you. This is how it's gonna look when you open it up and it, all of them come with a little scoop that is like this. So one of these scoops is for two ounces of uh, water, basically. And we'll make a two ounce bottle. And so depending on how, what size of bottle, you'll just add it according to the measurements. So you just wanna make sure you level it off. You don't wanna pack it. The directions say not to pack it. So I just scoop it up and kind of tap it off to make sure that it's not packed, but it is a full scoop of formula. And then I just plop it into the bottle. And we need one more. All right. And then I'll go ahead and do the other bottle. So generally at the beginning of the day, or actually I do this at night, it really depends. Most of the time I do it at night, but I, he usually drinks about five or six bottles a day. So I will just make his bottles for the day. So I don't have to constantly be making bottles throughout the day. And his, um, the person that is watching him, it's less hassle for them. Their bottles are already made. You can also make pitchers of formula. I've personally never done it, but they do sell those, um, online or whatnot and you can make a pitcher formula and then just pour it into the bottles i just like to make individual bottles because they're already ready to go so you just put their caps back on and then you just want to cover the hole and shake give it a really good shake really good shake there you go And then I always check the bottom to make sure that there is no clumps or anything at the bottom. And then of course, always give it a good, another last minute shake and then put the caps on and put them in the refrigerator if I am not going to be using them. If you're not gonna be using them right away, you wanna make sure you put them in the refrigerator um, and you need to make sure that you use it within 24 hours. And then if you are gonna be using it right away, then you wanna make sure that they finish the bottle within an hour. If, you, if they start drinking and they don't finish the bottle within an hour, you need to make sure that you dispose of it and make them a new bottle, just because that is what the directions say on the uh, formula. And also, I think it also has to do with bacteria forming because of the milk and whatnot and all of the extra vitamins and minerals and things that are in here that are good for your baby. So for these, I will go ahead and put them in the refrigerator and then once Eli wakes up, I will warm up the bottle and show you how I do that. If the end is near, just know that I got you. I'm your armor when things get tough. No, I got you back. Your battles are mine too. I fight for you when things get hard. All right, guys. So Eli just woke up, so I'm going to get one of his bottles and warm them up and I'll show you which warmer I have. There's tons to choose from and you know, some babies might not even want their bottle warmed up. Mine personally either likes it room temperature, so if I just made him a bottle and I'm, everything is room temperature, which 
Normally it's not if you're using nursery water and need to refrigerate it. it you're gonna always have to warm it up, but Eli loves his bottles warm or room temperature. Ava, I could literally take it out of the refrigerator and she would drink it just like that, especially on a summer day. I'm sure it was super refreshing to her, but it really just depends. And again, not everybody keeps their water the jug that they get with the distilled or purified water in the refrigerator. I don't really think that you it's you have to. I don't think it's going to go bad. I just personally do because of all that extra stuff that they add. But if you're just using just regular distilled purified water, if as long as you're keeping it in a you know cool you know dry place that isn't going to be you know have extreme temperatures you can just put the cap back on and store it in your pantry and then you just have room temperature bottles and you can warm them up if your baby prefers so let me get the bottles out and i will go ahead and warm these up for him so this is the bottle warmer that i have it's by munchkin it's really simple and straightforward you just want to make sure that you have water in here which i do make sure that there's water in here and then you just want to take the cap off of the bottle. And again, you can use any bottle warmer of your choice. It has a little thing here to help you. You wanna put it down in there. It has this little cap. And then you just wanna turn it on. I usually do um, two, two minutes, um, it, but it really just depends on your preferences. I usually do that, and then if I want it warmer, then I'll put it back in, but normally that does the trick. And then it is going to warm it up i love the bottles that actually shows what the temperature is on the bottle one of my new favorites that i recently um just ordered actually <laughs> i'm waiting for it to get here is the nook bottles and those actually have a temperature on them that you can see how hot it is but i'll show you what i do just to make sure i test the temperature out before i give it to him and on that note, I would not recommend warming a bottle up in the microwave. I know some people do it. I just think that that is not a good option at all because you can have hot spots and think that the bottle is a good temperature and it's not. So I don't recommend doing that. So as you see, it is making a little bubbly heating up sound and it will beep whenever it is done. get like a little cloth just so it can be a little bit warm but this helps you take it out and I just take it out dry off the bottle just want to make sure you're using a clean cloth to dry it off and there you have your warmed up bottle now normally I just kind of like go like this and test it on my inner of my wrist to make sure that it's not super hot but there you have it. That is how I make a bottle of formula. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you with learning how to sterilize and make a bottle of formula. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. If the end is near, just know that I got you. I'm your armor.